Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my first review of the Hunter Hunter Chimera Ant Arc. Uh, so yeah, well, so let me explain this right quick. Chimera Ant Arc is big. It's a it's a very long arc. It goes from in total. Uh, let me see if I got this right here. Episode seventy six, all the way to episode one hundred and thirty six. That's a lot to cover, and there is a lot that happens in this arc. So, I've decided to split it up, and you're, one, you're probably wondering, like, okay, how many parts is this going to be? Like, two or three? No, it's going to be five, <laughs> and let me explain. There seem to be five very distinct sections of this arc that, that very, very clearly, like, separate each other. Like, like, the arc is split into these different sections that very clearly are meant to kind of feel like their own, in a way, mini-arcs. Um, so it, I feel like it's the best way to separate these out. I feel like it works the best. So I have separated them in terms of the episode count of the 2011 anime, so we'll be going by that, and basically by each set focus of the arc. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to talk about everything, so if there's anything I miss from any of these, just feel free to let me know. Um, you can ask me anything in the comments, I'll, I'll respond, I'll tell you my thoughts on anything I might have missed, um, or clarify something maybe, but let's get this started. So, this is part one, and this will be episodes 76 through 85, kind of the introduction of the arc, the introduction of the ideas, the themes, the more dark nature compared to previous arcs. Um, and I will say right off the bat, obviously there will be major spoilers talked about. Not only in this, but in all of these Chimera Ant arc videos, I will be discussing major spoilers. So if you have not seen the Chimera Ant arc of uh, Hunter Hunter, uh, the 2011 anime, I guess, specifically, because that's how I'm taking it in, I would suggest checking it out before watching this, unless you don't mind spoilers. But once again, this first episode will, this first part, this first review will cover episodes 76 through 85 in the 2011 anime. I don't know how that comes out to the chapters of the manga, so, because I don't read the manga. <laughs> um, okay, so let's, let's get started with the spoilers in three, two, one now. So after the events of Greed Island, we see that Gon and Kilua have follow have used the cards they were able to bring off of Greed Island in order to travel to who they think is going to be Gon's father, Jean. However, they end up meeting Kite instead due to a little workaround that Jean had uh, planned for. Um, Kite is a apprentice, a student of Jean, and we find out very quickly that he is definitely a very skilled hunter. Um, he, after meeting Gon and Kilua, he basically introduces himself by almost seemingly attacking them, but in reality he's attacking these small carnivorous ants that Gon and Kilua happen to be right by called the Chimera Ants. He explains what the Chimera Ants are, that they're these ants that they consume different things and start to take on their traits, passing them along to their offspring and all. And that a Chimera Ant Queen can do this to an even greater level. Um, I believe that, that the term they, that is used for it is phagogenesis. If I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've seen the beginning of the arc. Um, I'm much further in at this point, but I believe that that's the phrase or the term that's used, phagogenesis. Um, but yeah, so the chimera ants are these very dangerous, quarantined creatures um, and that kite as... His profession is study. So Gon and Kilua start to learn from him, learn more about Jean, learn more about uh, the Chimera Ants, and 
all at the same time, we get to see what the actual Chimera Ant Queen is doing. We get to see she's hiding in a cave, feeding on all of these different types of animals. We see her feed on bats, on crabs, on fish, all this kind of different kind of stuff in order to pass those traits on to her offspring. Uh, we even get to see her create some of these offspring. And, and the offspring very much take on the physical appearance of whatever they're basically made from. Like one of the chimera ants, for example, at this point is a crab, and it's literally just a giant walking crab. It doesn't really look like an ant at all. Um, the queen very much does, but this one doesn't because this one is made from a crab. It's, it looks like a crab. It's a, it's a really interesting type of enemy uh, that very much works for this series. Um, but we see Kite introduce some friends of his who are also helping him study the ants and whatnot to go Nikila, and they decide to head to this place called the NGL. And I do not remember what NGL stands for. It, it, it does stand for something. I do not remember at all what it stands for. Um, but the NGL is basically this, um, this technology free land, but it's, it's much more than that. It's like any kind of modern technologies or inventions or anything like that cannot be brought into the NGL. There's a border, uh, like guard basically who makes sure that it's like anything that cannot be found naturally, you have to get rid of. And if you have any kind of implants or whatnot, you're just shit out of luck. <laughs> Um, but they even have, like, specially made clothing that you can buy at the border. Because it's like, if the clothing is not, like, naturally made, if your clothing is not naturally made, you're not allowed in. It's that serious. It's it's insane. It's like, yeah, there, there are real-life equivalents to this of, of people who want to live naturally off the land and believe that a lot of these advancements have only hurt humanity and, and the earth and whatnot. And... I understand it to a point, but at the same time, it's like a lot of these advancements have helped in a lot of ways, helped be able to fight diseases, helped be able to extend human lifespans and whatnot. It's like they're very important. <laughs> um, but this is how this uh, country just runs. So they end up going into the NGL, and we also see that some others have made it into the NGL as well, some others we know. Uh, specifically, Pokal and Ponzu from the Hunter exams. Um, they, they've entered with some friends to do some uh, studies as well, and we see very quickly that they've gotten stronger too. Uh, we get to start meeting some other Chimera ants as they're born, uh, including Colt, Peggy, and Ramit, who are three of the more notable ones for sure. But there's, there's quite a few notable ones. Um, and we get to see, like, they're being created from different animals and creatures and stuff, but also eventually humans. Um, because we see, like, these little kids, these two little kids who are very cute and wholesome and lovable, end up getting attacked and killed by the crab ant, who then takes their bodies to the queen, who eats them and passes their human traits on to, um, to the offspring. And it's like, it, it's kind of that moment when the kids are attacked and killed and then eaten, when it's like, oh, oh, fuck. Okay, things are getting dark here. It's like, yeah, there's been some moments of dark stuff in previous parts of this arc, but it's like, that's where it gets really fucking dark. So... We get to get to kind of meet these chimera ants, and we see it's made very clear right away that Colt is like the little boy who was eaten by the queen and all. Um, he even has like some kind of memory, a little bit of memories from it. We we get to meet all these other ants, and they all have these distinct personalities. Colt is a very loyal soldier. Um, Peggy, uh, who's this penguin, is very much this knowledgeable wise elder of the group. Ramit is kind of the troublemaking teenager who just wants to do his own shit. Um, and, and it's like, 
I love that all these ants have their own distinct personalities. They, they make it so that they come across as real characters and not just these evil villains. It makes them feel like people in a way. And considering they're made from people um, partially, it's like, that makes sense. Um, but we get to see how these ants work, how they take on enemies, and we even get to see them fight against Pokal and Ponzu's group. And things don't go well. They end up getting separated. Ponzu sends out a distress signal to whoever is... Basically, she sends her bees out to whoever is nearby, who might be the strongest. And then she ends up getting shot in the face multiple times, over and over, by one of the Chimera ants. And it is actually one of the more disturbing parts in this series for me. I don't know exactly why, but it freaks me out. It, like, it bothers the shit out of me. <laughs> Just her, it's so sudden too. And it's not, it's not even the first shot. It's that we see him stand over her body, continuously shooting her in the face over and over her, her corpse at this point. And it's just like, it just bothers me so much. Poco, meanwhile, gets notably injured, but ends up uh, hiding in the uh, Chimera Ant base, basically waiting and watching. And during all of this, we find out about the Royal Guards, three specific strong Chimera Ants who are bred and born specifically for the purpose of serving the king, who is like the ultimate goal of the queen. The queen's ultimate goal is to give birth to the king who will rule. And there can be multiple kings even, we find out. Um, so she's working on giving birth to the king and in the meantime sets up basically these eggs that the uh, Royal Guard are uh, kind of just progressively growing and everything in. And eventually one of them hatches. And we get Neferpito. And I'll be honest, Neferpito's arrival, debut and everything, and more I'll get into later, easily the scariest part of this anime. At least, even up to where I'm at currently. Neferpito scared the shit out of me. Like, legitimately scared me. Uh, with, with her debut and everything. Just the way she carried herself, the way she um, acted, the way she spoke even. Even the way she speaks, which has, like, cat puns and shit in it. Because she's, she's a cat ant. Um, I don't know, something about it is just creepy as fuck. The way she carries herself, the way the aura around her is portrayed. Even Ramek, who is very ag aggressively antagonistic towards the other ants and whatnot. Even he, like, the instant he senses her aura and shit, it's like, oh, I'm fucked. It's like, no, I, I don't even have any aspirations of being the best anymore. I don't have any aspirations of being aggressive anymore. It's like, not with something like that. And it's like, oh, <laughs> It's like, just that alone scares me. Because <laughs> Ramit was that aggressive about things towards the others. <laughs> so it's like, to see him to see him be that scared and, and be humbled that hard is, it's intense. Um, but yeah. Anyways, Neferpito ends up realizing when all the other ants didn't that Pokal is hiding there they capture Pokal slice his head open and probe his brain to force him to tell them about Nen and it is so fucking disturbing it's like the thing with Ponzu was disturbing with her being shot over and over like that and then they do that as well and it's like oh my god and it's like Pokal and Ponzu were kind of likable characters from the hunter exam they, they weren't bad characters, and you kind of like them, and to see them die in this way is so so violently in the case of Ponzu, and so horrific, horrifically sadly and depressingly for Poco. It's just like, my God. But they probe his brain, and they learn all about Nen, because Ramit had, uh, had a confrontation with Kite, Gon, and Kilua, and he lost... But because he was hit by Gon, he ended up having his nodes accidentally opened, his uh, aura nodes. 
and it allowed him the ability to possibly use Nen. So with them finding out about Nen from um, Pokal, they are able to start using it, which definitely raises the, the danger factor once these ants are using Nen. <laughs> um, Ramitz is kind of the first. He, he, they, they even find out about the test, and so Ramit takes the test. I think Ramit's an enhancer, if I remember right. Um, but it's like, it's so wild to see the, the ants learning Nen and just getting so much stronger through it. Um, but yeah. And, and the last big thing to talk about in this video, in this review, part one of the Chimera Ant arc, is where this, this part of the arc ends. And it definitely helps to continue to make Neferpito excessively terrifying and just really fucking, really fucking scary. So Gon, Kilo, and Kite had fought a few groups of ants, um, various places. They're see, starting to see how the ants are working, starting to see the kinds of powers they have just from their natural uh, combinations of different animals and whatnot and people. And they then end up spotting the, um, the Chimera Ants fortress or castle or ant hill, whatever you want to call it. But they are also spotted by Neferpito. Neferpito launches herself really horrifyingly fast at them. Because they're, they're not really close, per se. It's still quite a long way. But she's at the anthill. She launches herself, just yeets herself over at them, and is at them, like, pretty much instantly, almost. That's how fast she is. Um, but she gets to them... And instantly chops off one of Kite's arms. No warning or anything. And then she and Kite are about to continue fighting. We see her turn towards Gon and Kilo, and it's like the aura she's showing is easily the most horrifying aura we've seen of any character in the show. Much worse than even Hisoka. And... Gon wants to fight because Gon's angry at the fact that she chopped off Kite's arm. But Kilo is like, oh, no, this is not happening. Knocks him out. And it's like, runs. <laughs> Those two run off. Well, Kilo runs off carrying Gon with him. While Kite continues to, well, I guess fight uh, Pito. Not for Pito. Um, and, yeah, at the very end of this part... We have Neverpito like saying like, oh, because she had been wondering about how strong she is because she hadn't had a chance yet to test her strength. We see her sitting there saying, like, yeah, I, I guess I'm pretty strong. And then it pans out and we see her holding Kite's decapitated head. And that is basically how this part of the arc ends before it moves into the next section, the next distinct section of the arc. And it's like, Oh, fuck. <laughs> it, it's pretty much this. these introductory episodes, or again, chapters, I guess, if you read the manga, um, very much give us the intensity and the threat level of the Chimera Ants. It shows them as a very, very legitimate threat. And just seeing Neferpito's danger level, it's like you instantly know, it's like, oh, fuck. She's just one of the three royal guards. And there's a king coming who's supposed to be the strongest. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not ready. Like, that, that was my thoughts at this point in the series. It's like, I, I'm not ready. Um, legitimately one of the scariest enemies I think I've seen in anime, honestly. I don't know exactly where she'd place. I'd, I'd really have to think about that and really uh, analyze that. I could say, like, Johan Liebert from Monster would definitely be really high up there. <laughs> um, but it's she's definitely up there as well. Um, oh, also, um, I say she because that's what the subtitles and everything for the series uh, say. 
But apparently in the original manga, I guess, like, um, Neferpito is not referred to with gendered pronouns. Um, and I think, like, in various, like, I, I think in some subtitles or whatnot, Neferpito is referred to with he, him pronouns or, uh, like, in the dub or something. I don't, I don't know. There's, like, a lot of, like, fluid um, gendering when it comes to Pito, and it's... I, I feel like it's kind of like up to the person, up to the specific viewer or reader to determine how they view Pito, whether they want to refer to Pito with he, him, she, her, or they, them pronouns, or, or something like that. Um, I usually mostly refer to Pito with she, her pronouns. I'll, I'm just letting you guys know for future reviews and stuff as well for this arc, I do refer to her with those pronouns because... That is what the version I am watching, I am taking in, uses mostly. Um, because I'm watching it with Rough Senpai's reactions on uh, Patreon. And his reactions on there, he's watching the original Japanese with the English dubs on, I believe he's watching on Crunchyroll. So those would be probably the most official direct translations um, for subtitles. So th those are the ones that I'm going by. So just saying right off the point, that's what I'm using for Pito going forward. And that's why I've been using the she, her pronouns in this, in this video. Um, but yeah, this, this first part of the arc is definitely set up. It's meant to introduce us to the concept of the Chimera Ants, introduce us to the threat of them, how legitimately scary and powerful they are especially compared to villains and whatnot we've gotten in the previous arcs it's meant to show a lot of new abilities in that regard showing how um all of these ants learn nen and all the different things they can uh, start to do with that once they start learning that it's definitely meant to just bring us into this arc in a um very notable way and it very much succeeds um at this point in the arc i was at this point in the arc as of where this ends with episode 85 i'm still a, more of a fan of other arcs like this is this is the chimera arc is viewed by many to be one of the best arcs in anime like all together and most fans say it's the best arc in in Hunter Hunter. Um, by this point in the arc, episode seventy six through eighty five, I don't agree with the, either of those, but it is still very good, and it is a fantastic way to open an arc, um, especially a longer arc like this. It really sets the tone excellently, and really tells us what we're in store for without really fully going into how heavy it's going to get yet. Um, obviously, the heaviest part is Kite's death. Even though we've just met him, like, this is, like, nine episodes total in the in the 2011 anime, so it's, like... Um, and I think this arc wasn't even in the... Uh, the, um, the 90s anime, so... I keep saying the 2011 anime, but I think that's the only anime adaption for this arc. <laughs> um, but it's like, we just met Kite, so we haven't had a lot of time to connect with him. So it's like, I'm not as invested in his character when he dies. Um, so, so I feel like the monumental intensity of his death is more based upon what we do know and like about him at this point as well as Gon and Kilua's reactions to the entire situation with Pito's attack on them. I, I, and, and just Nefer Pito in general being fucking terrifying. <laughs> I think that's what makes the scene more effective than actually Kite's death itself. Th that, that specific thing itself isn't actually what's scary about it, for me at least. Um, but tell me in the comments below what you thought of these first nine episodes, episodes 76 through 85 of the Chimera Ant arc. Uh, tell me your thoughts, just 
how this set everything up, how it began to really kick this arc off and introduce the stakes and the danger level and everything that started to just really just hook you in to the arc right away. And um, just letting you know, the most recent episode as of uh, recording this that I have watched is 127. So I'm through most of the arc, but please do not spoil for me how the arc ends. Do not spoil for me anything after episode 127. Um, I want to remain as spoiler-free as possible, especially for the rest of this series at this point. Um, but yeah, tell me your thoughts on these first nine episodes of the arc. And next week, probably on Monday, uh, we'll get into the second video of the Chimera Ant arc reviews here. Um, the second video I'm just going to tell you right now is going to be the shortest, I'm sure, because it's only covering episodes 86 through 90, um, which will be focused on the versus knuckle and shoot section of this arc. So, yeah, it, it's a lot shorter of a section of the arc, but I, I want to cut this arc into its distinct sections just to make it easier for the reviews, just so I don't have to cover too much at once. Uh, but yeah, so episodes 86 through 90, the content of that will be discussed in the next review, the, the next part of the Chimera Ant arc reviews. So yeah, tell me what you thought down below. Tell me what you thought of these first nine episodes of the arc. And thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.